Good morning, everyone. And good morning to everybody out there on the uh, internet, YouTube, Facebook. We are going to be very blessed today because we have a guest pastor in today. Pastor Logan Davis will be preaching. His wife, Jessa, will be doing a solo, I, I believe, or singing along. So that'll be great today as well. And uh, we also have Jamie, who is on the piano. And you will have the opportunity to hear this wonderful Yamaha, and that's about the best I can call it with the other name. Of what Clavinova. The, Clavinova, Yamaha Clavinova. 301, I forget what the other letters are that go in between there, but it's a fantastic instrument that we have been blessed with, and it's just going to be a great opportunity today to hear a wonderful message, hear some great music, and to hear the melodies just kind of flow through the sanctuary, so this will be really great today. But let's open up with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you that you provide for us uh, just in your time, and we just thank you, Father, that we are able to gather here in this building, and also those who are able to view on Facebook and uh, YouTube, and just, Father, we just ask that you would uh, just send the Holy Spirit to bless this service today. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Pastor Logan Davis to be here to, to give this message. We pray, Father, that uh, you would uh, bless him with the words that need to be heard today, Father, and to be applied to our lives. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do want to uh, make uh, just a few announcements here. Uh, one is, is that we had a wonderful blessing of music last week with De Debbie Mills. And coming in July 3rd, we're going to be having Calvary's Love here. So it's, it's been great. We're going to have some more music today, so this is going to be a wonderful time. And also, I just wanted to mention that we do have a Bible study going on in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We're about uh, seven or eight verses uh, into that chapter right now, so this will be on Wednesday nights. 6.15, come and gather for a meal, and then at 6.30, the Bible study starts. And then also, if you do have children, we also have uh, a separate uh, children's Bible study going on at the same time. So it's a wonderful time that we can get this together and just really <coughs> worship and praise the Lord, not just on Sunday, but also through the week as well. Okay, if everybody could turn to page 254 in your hymnal, we are going to be singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
mean? You know, it, we are so fortunate to have instruments and music back into this church again. I mean, we've been Amen. very patient. The Lord knows that. And it's just really great. You know, I, before I came today, I was thinking back on how I got involved with music, and it was because of my mother. She was a choir director for the children's uh, choir for Sunday, and of course, what I would do, I was pretty young at that time, so she'd be in there directing the kids and all that, and then all of a sudden, somebody would see a light on in the, um, kind of in, in a screen up above, well, that was where the pipes were for the pipe organ, and of course, that was my favorite place to hang out, and it's a good they said, hey, Mrs. Brand, Terry's up in the in the organ with the pipe organs and uh, every time I have to come back down there. But anyway, those are those were some memories when I knew that this organ piano well, it's about any kind of music you'd want to hear that. But I heard the pipes on this when they played, and that, that just brought back some great memories here. But I just wanted to kind of share that with you that music just pulls us in so many different ways because we have music around us all the time. The Lord has blessed us with that. And so with that opportunity here, we've got the chance to hear music. We've got a great pastor today that's going to be giving a message. And I would like to just have Pastor Tony continue on with the service here. So I will get him introduced up here. So while they're working out the music arrangement here, um, you know, the interesting thing about these hymns is that they are hundreds of years old. Some are 150 years old, but they're still used today. But, you know, the Bible doesn't change. It, the word there is very practical back then, and it is so practical for today and for our future. And we should realize that and apply it to our lives. It's just, it, it is the, it's the book beyond all other books that would teach you how to manage your money, how to manage your marriage, how to manage relationships with your neighbors. Uh, if you need information on that, hunt it down. Thank goodness there's a glossary in there. There's a concordance so it can get you in that. Now they've got topical Bibles so you can look something up like that. It should be much easier, but you need to take the time to, uh, to look at it. So don't be afraid of it that it's got... 2,500 pages in it, but it's, you, know, you can go to page 375 and look at something there in the Old Testament, and it's probably going to touch your life in some manner. So let's continue on with our service. Let's have Pastor Tony come up and continue on with our message. Thank you, well, Good to have you this morning, and we're going to turn to page 213, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, and this will be our offertory again. And so afterwards, we'll have a couple of people come up and take up our tithes and offerings. <clears throat> 213, let's stand together as we sing. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, lunch me, thy tender care.
J uh, Steve, come on up if you will, and James, would you take up our tithes and offerings for us? Well, as they're, as they're doing that, I'll just make a few announcements here. Uh, we are having uh, Randy Long come to sing Mother's Day. And I believe that's May the 8th, Mother's Day. So we're looking forward to hearing Randy Long sing. We enjoyed uh, tremendously Debbie Mills. She did a wonderful job in the concert. Then went over to Pemberton, did another concert. We called that one too. So uh, good singing, good singing and good fellowship. And so we're looking forward to having more singing and, and more as we go now. I want to thank all of you that had a part in cleaning the pews and uh, also uh, we had the carpet cleaned, and, and many of us worked together to change the light bulbs, and, and it's much brighter in here. Many of them were blown, and so we put the LEDs in, and it's so, isn't it cheery in here? Cheery and nice, so we're thankful for that. And uh, so now let's go ahead and take up our tithes and offerings. Let's uh, bow in a moment of prayer. <clears throat> James, would you lead us in prayer? Please, Father, sanctify this offering we're about to receive. Watch over, protect, and bless this church, plus the congregation. And um, watch over and lead us in all our ways, Father, and let your will be done. I'd like to ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Jamie, will have an offering. Song is saying to play. And as she does that, just want you to know how fortunate we are to have several things. A building, for one, a fellowship hall, uh, a roof over our heads. God has helped us survive the pandemic. Many did not. And many churches did not. So we're thankful today. And we're thankful for our piano that was donated to us, to our church. And what a wonderful addition that is. And I'm going to try to get with Jamie after bit after church, after we eat, we'll come over, and it has a record device in it. You can put a floppy disk in it, or another kind of a chip in there, and it will record whatever is played. And so, Jamie, you're going to live on in legacy. <laughs> yes, your playing will be here for a while, I have to tell you. And so I'll push a button, push the play button, and we'll have music. That's a blessing right there, it really is. And uh, to have the uh, Clavinova uh, which is a very expensive and very wonderful piece of equipment there. It's a nice electronic digital keyboard. Thank you, Jamie, for saying, playing it so beautiful, right? And uh, we have Logan that's going to be coming here in a few minutes, and he will uh, be bringing a message for us. And while he's uh, getting ready to come, we have a special song. Jessa, your wife, is going to sing a song for us. Come on up, Jessa. You're going to sing from there? Do you have a, a microphone there? No? you need a microphone? She... No, like, well, we established that they didn't need one. All right. Very dried.
just wonderful here. We really appreciate this. And let's give another hand here for Jamie. Oh, oh, yes, can I? Forget the pastor's wife here. Very important. That's a very important part of uh, a foundation there with getting the word let out. So we'll bring the uh, our pastor back up again. Pastor... Get you turning and twisting here, oh, and yeah. I'll let you do the introduction here. All right. Thank you very much, Sherry. You're welcome. Yeah, I heard it. Well, we are glad to hear, have, hear, hear Logan Davis this morning, that he's here, and also that we've heard him before and we enjoy his preaching. So, Logan Davis is Carlene's brother, Mark Davis's son. So, that would be Carlene's nephew. And he's here. Come on up, Logan, if you will, from now from the St. Mary's area. And they were originally from some time, some Sydney area, then moved to Wapakoneta, right? And so we're glad to have you here. And we're just going to ask uh, Logan to do what God leads him to do. This is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Anybody know why they call it Palm Sunday? Huh? Because of the palm leaves, that's right, because when Jesus did the triumphal entry into Jerusalem a week before he was crucified, Jerusalem was cheering and people were all excited, here's the king, the king is here. And of course he didn't come to, to be the king the way they thought he was going to be the, the king, but he was, and he is. And so they threw the palm leaves in before uh, the don donkey he was riding and, and uh, clothes, they took their coats off and threw down in the in the way of that the donkey was traveling. Palm Sunday. How about that? And then uh, this past Friday was what kind of a Friday? What was the name of it? Good Friday. Good Friday. That's right. Good Friday. And I asked the kids Wednesday night in the children's church, what does Good Friday mean? They couldn't understand some of them how it could be good if Jesus was killed. I said it wasn't good because he died that he was killed, but it was good because he died for us and was our sacrifice. So it was Good Friday. And then he rose the third day from death, hell, and the grave and was victorious. And now we can be saved because of that, right? And that day is called Easter. That's right. Easter. And so we understand now how these things came to be. The kids got a pretty good understanding by the time uh, they left on Wednesday night. And so uh, we are going to turn it over to Logan now. Logan, come on up if you will. Logan Davis. God bless you. <coughs> All right. Well, um, it's a blessing to be here. I, uh, I think if everybody doesn't mind, I'm going to take my jacket off. No. I tend to get a little hot. <laughs> I tell you, I, um, I kept thinking during the whole beginning of the service here of different things to say that uh, I appreciate. Um, I appreciate Brother Terry and his uh, ability to fill in. <laughs> if you've never been up in front of people and had to fill in... It, with, with talking about it, it's it's not an easy task, and uh, I appreciate what he said about the Bible too. God's God gave us His word. He said that uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. And um, everything else created, everything else that you have, the phones and the clothes and the books and the great works of literature, you know, the Shakespeare and the whatever from. You know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. It's all decaying. <laughs> Everything in our entire universe is gradually decaying. Yeah. Nothing is getting better and lasting forever. You know, suns are burning, but they're burning out. And um, <clears throat> this book is the only thing that we have from outside of this decaying universe. Yeah. This book is not decaying. Amen. This book is eternal. This That's book right. is holy and perfect. And yes. it's written by a holy, perfect God. Amen. And, um, 
You can never read it too much. Yeah. Um, real quick before I get started, my mom said that she uh, had another song laid on her heart, so I'll leave it up to Pastor, but right ahead. if uh, nobody minds, she'll sing another song while I get my notes and stuff ready. Sometimes it just kind of strikes you, you know, the the amount of blessing that God puts forth. And um, it's a blessing to me to hear you folks thanking God for what he's done for this church. And um, he always takes care of us and he always blesses us, um, even though we know we don't deserve it. Um, I use a lot of different scripture when I preach usually, so I'll flip around. If you can't get there in time, just listen. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's all right. Um, I try not to start, you know, I try not to flip too fast because I've had time to put bookmarks everywhere that I'm going. So, um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to start off in John chapter 12. Um, <laughs> Since it's Palm Sunday, I decided to start off here. Um, John chapter 12, starting verse 12. This is talking about uh, what Pastor Tony was just talking about, the triumphal enter, entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Um, 
there was a lot here that was fulfilling prophecy and it was one of the it was a very significant event and um, in John chapter 12 verse 12 it says on the next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord and Jesus when he had found a young ass and sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's coal. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they these, that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, God, please, Lord, um, bless this day, God. Uh, again, Lord, I pray that you send your spirit here, God, and... Don't let me get in your way, Lord. If there's anything that you want to say to any of the people here or watching online or anything, God, please, Lord, um, use me as a mouthpiece, God, and just get me completely out of your way, Lord. And just uh, be here with us, God. Help us all to learn from your word, Lord, and uh, help us to draw closer to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Now, a week after this, this is described... More, you know, how the Gospels, each one kind of describes the same event from a different view. So it's always good to, if you're looking at a certain event, studying a certain event, to look at it in all the other Gospels. And um, I'm not going to do that right now just for time's sake. But this was a huge thing. There were multitudes of people everywhere shouting and praising God and praising His Son. And laying their coats and the palm trees out there. <clears throat> and a week later, they were worked up into a fury, screaming that they wanted a murderer and a seditionist released to them. Sedition is when someone speaks against the government. Um, kind of like a traitor or something like that, I guess you could say. Um, a week after this, these same people are screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Pilate's art scourged him. He said, there's nothing wrong with, you know, I find no fault in the man. He, he hasn't done anything wrong. And they're like, crucify him. And he's like, okay, well, I'll let him go or this murderer. And they're like, give us the murderer. And <clears throat> they just won't be appeased unless it's by his blood. And... Um, <clears throat> A lot of things we can take out of this, but what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to focus on is these people didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They had a hope in Him, and they had an idea in their head of how it should go. And they they thought you know He was going to come in, He was going to overthrow the Romans, and He was going to lead them to this glorious uh, exalting of their nation and that they would finally be free from all the bondage they've suffered for hundreds and hundreds of years and everything would just be hunky-dory. And that will happen. Yes. That, that the, the prophecy that speaks of that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that, that, that will happen, yeah. but not at that time. <laughs> and these people didn't understand that and because they were, I think they had a mob mentality. <laughs> and um, that kind of happens to us. We're influenced by the people around us. That's why it's important to be in church. It's why it's important Amen. to fellowship with other Christians. To have Amen. other believers in Jesus Christ that you get together with and talk about the things of God. Because <laughs> that is an influence on you. When you're talking about God with another Christian, you're both influencing each other to be more mind, more thoughtful of the things of God. You're both Amen. influencing each other to be uh, drawn to the things of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and um, it's a very important thing to do. And these people, you know, they were all excited about the king coming in. <laughs> but it took a week for that to go away. Because they didn't have a bond. Um, 
there's a lot of different things that bond people together. Uh, somebody at my church was talking about the other day, or my pastor, my assistant pastor. Um, there's like the bond that my wife and I have. That is a unique bond that I share with no one else. She's my wife. I love her romantically. We're married. We're going to be married till the day we die. And that is a very unique bond. And that bond strengthens the longer that we go through our life together. Amen. I also share a bond with my parents. Not the same bond, but a different bond. A bond that I don't share with my wife or my friends or anyone else of them being there when I was a little child and raising me and constantly providing for me and giving me the clothes and the food and the toys and all the stuff that they provided throughout my life, that's a very unique bond and that gives us a connection that even when I'm doing things that they don't approve of or when they're doing things that I dislike, we still have a very deep connection that goes beyond whatever trivial matters we come up with. <clears throat> whatever nonsense comes up, you know, if we argue or whatever, we get past it because we have that bond. Um, that little baby over there by my wife, I have a insane bond with him. <laughs> he was, he's two months old yesterday, and I'm still figuring it out, but I mean, I always heard, you know, you'll never know until you have one of your own, and I never figured I'd have one of my own, but I do, and, uh, the connection I feel to that little guy is just indescribable. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All of these people, and there's friends as well that I have history with. History is one of the things that connections, that bonds are built on. Um, <clears throat> you see this with people in battle. Um, on, a, on a darker side of things. <clears throat> uh, you have two soldiers that don't really get along, but when they're in the foxholes watching their friends get blown apart and the chaos and the intensity, and that all they have to rely on is each other, that's a bond. That's a connection that when they come back home, their wives, their children, their family, they don't understand that. The, the soldiers that are there in the thick of it, they do. And all of these bonds... These things that connect people tighter than blood and just make people just closely knit. Uh, the Bible talks about Jonathan and David and their souls being knit together because they were such good and close friends, closer than brothers, just, you know, just intense bond there. Amen. The bond that we have with Jesus Christ <laughs> makes those look like you ran into somebody at Walmart. I mean, comparing the bonds of parents and children and siblings to the bond that we have with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. they pale in comparison. Amen. <clears throat> because we are filthy sinners, and he died for us anyways. Yep. We love him because he first loved us, <laughs> the yes, Bible says in 1 John 4, 19. Um, he showed his love. God commended his love toward us when we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So while we are the enemies of God, Jesus Christ takes all this intense humiliation and suffering and punishment and abuse and torture that we couldn't even imagine, especially not in today's day and age. And he does it just to save our souls. <laughs> and he gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives in us, a part of God. That's something that I don't think we're going to ever understand fully until we get to heaven and have our perfect bodies and have all the stuff that God's promised us. But the connection there can't be severed. It's, it's beyond anything that we can imagine. Um, Paul, Paul says, uh, neither height nor depth nor principalities or powers or <laughs> any other creature is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. The, that, that love of our creator that sent his own son to die for us. <clears throat> and God, God uses a lot of different things to, um, to describe this to us. Uh, a very important thing, if you're ever doing any Bible study, a very important little phrase to watch out for <clears throat> is... Um, 
like as or like unto. Because the Bible explains heavenly things and we don't know heavenly things. <laughs> so God says like as or like unto or this which is like this. And if you keep an eye out for that phrase, it pops in the Bible a lot. And um, it'd be like going to a desert where nobody had ever seen a tree and, try, and saying, well, it's, it's like, you know, really thick grass that gets really big. You know, it's like a bush that's really big. And, you know, you, you, you'd use other stuff to describe it to them if they had never seen it. <clears throat> um, and God does the same thing with us. And, and what I'm kind of moving towards here is... Um, <clears throat> Looking at a couple of the things that God likens our relationship to. Um, Romans chapter 8 is where I'm going next. Romans chapter 8. Um, <clears throat> While you're flipping there, I'll read another passage. Um, <clears throat> This is just a chapter over. It's in Romans 9, but it says, uh, Romans 9, 25 says, As he also saith in a sea, which is Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place that was said unto them, They are not my people. There they shall be called the children of the living God. <clears throat> and then here in Romans chapter 8, uh, start with verse 17, or 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, and so yes. may we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. <clears throat> For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. <clears throat> um, a parent and child's bond is very unique. And being called a child of God is very descriptive. And it's not something that we should take lightly. It's right. not something that we should just kind of gloss over. And the, the thing is, is like with a lot of us that have been Christians for a long time and in church and raised in church and all this, it's hard for us to go back over the basic type of stuff like, yeah, you know, we're God's children. We know that. You know, we learned it when we were little kids ourselves, <laughs> a lot of us. But I mean like... Up until Jesus died, nobody was called that. Up until Jesus died, like the, the great heroes in the in the Bible, you know, David and uh, Abraham, Isaiah, you know, these people that God used so greatly, he used them to write part of the Bible and did such miraculous things. And we get to be called children. Amen. We yes. get the blessing of being called the children of God. Praise God. And obviously, it's not something that we deserve. But it's an extremely biased love. Mm -hmm. The love of a parent for a child is very <laughs> biased. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you can see this, and I'm sure everybody probably has an example um, of somebody that you know that their kid is just... Scumbag. I mean, that's a nice way to put it. They're just, they're just rotten to the core. And this person is just fawning over their kid. This person is just being taken advantage of by their, by their kid. They're, they're taking, you know, giving them money and doing, you know, just taking care of them because, you know, defending them even when there's nothing to defend. You know, I mean, some, some people are just rotten. And I've seen parents that just allow themselves to be used because it's their kid. Because it's their child. And <laughs> God's like that with us a lot of times, you know? God's like that with us in that 
he answers our prayers and he blesses us and he takes care of us and he protects us from stuff when we're not really sacrificing much for him. And we're not really going out of our way to tell other people about him like he asked us to. And we're not spending any, uh, any anywhere close to the amount of time on our Bibles that we're supposed to. And, and I mean, I'm speaking to myself here. Um, I, I don't know you guys. I don't know your walk with God. I'm just saying. We're not as close to God as we should be. And I'm sure that we do things that disappoint him a lot. Yeah. But he has this fatherly love toward us that he constantly takes care of us and blesses us. Amen. <laughs> you know, I mean, I stay up late. You know, in the middle of the week, this happens and that happens. Like Thursday nights, you know, my church has prayer meeting on Thursday nights. So we wind up going there and, you know, talking to somebody afterwards. And I don't get home until 10 o'clock. And I get up at 3.30 in the morning. So, you know, I finally lay down, finally get to sleep by 10.30. And then my son wakes me up screaming at 11.30 or 12 or 1. <laughs> and it doesn't really make me mad. It doesn't. It, 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 you know, it's like, you know, but I pick them up and I take care of them and, you know, my wife's looking at me like, yeah, sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't mind being woken up with this, you know, a, a baby is a perfect picture of the flesh too, you know, <laughs> screaming bloody murder until the split second that he gets what he wants and then everything's fine. You know, you'll take the bottle away from him and I'll... Like his feet are on fire, and then as soon as you get back, baby, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot how our flesh is like, but that's a whole other sermon. Um, but you know, it's it's he's my son, and he's a baby, and I understand that he has he doesn't he doesn't have any consciousness of what he's doing. He, he's not aware of hey, dad has to get up in two hours and really needs some sleep. He has no idea of that. He just knows, hey, my stomach hurts. I want to eat. <laughs> and that's what God does with us. We go to him in prayer, and he has things that he wants us to do, and we don't get it. We act like children act, and he loves us anyways, and he takes Amen. care of us. And he dresses us up, and he buttons our coats, Thank and he you, puts Jesus. on our shoes, and he ties them, and he puts on our hats, and he, you know, tucks in our little ear mitt, and mitt you know, puts on our mittens, and he, he does all the stuff that we don't really get, and we don't care about, and we don't understand, and we think that we don't need, <laughs> but he does what he has to do to take care of us and to protect us from the, the cold and the dangers of the world, and, you know, yeah, all the stuff that we don't know, <laughs> and... I think when we get to heaven, we see all the times that God saved our life. All the times that we were cussing mad because we lost our keys for 15 minutes and got to work late that, you know, we avoided getting in a huge wreck on the highway because of it. And, you know, the times that somebody cuts us off in traffic and we have to slam on the brakes, but, you know, if we had gone ahead, the next guy would have slammed into us, you know, just... I, ton of things. You have no idea all the stuff that God protects you from. Amen. Amen. And <laughs> looking back on my life, when I was not in church, not interested in God, not, had nothing to do with anything. My Bible was tossed in the corner and I didn't care about it. Looking back at all the times that I can tell, like directly point to that, 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 that God saved my life and saved me from going down worse paths than I did. <laughs> I can't imagine how many I don't see. I can't imagine how long my Heavenly Father has <clears throat> yes. walked with me when I was Amen. shunning Him, shunning His Word, yep. not caring. Amen. And He's had His hand around me going, you know, like, like a bratty little kid, just pulling me along and, no, don't go out in the street. And, you know, I'm screaming and fussing and carrying on and acting like a brat. <laughs> but he, He's there holding me and loving me and caring for me. Amen. The and um, that's how a good parent acts. A good parent 
loves and takes care of their kid, and <clears throat> even when they're punishing them or disapproving of what they're doing or whatever, there's an unconditional love there. <clears throat> there's a an affection there that that even in the worst times when my parents have been mad at me, you know, spanking me and whatever, <clears throat> I knew that they loved me. I knew that they were doing it out of love. I knew that they were not happy about it, but I but I knew that they loved me even when I made a mess. <clears throat> and I, I really I pray that I can pass that on to my kid because I think it's very important. Um, on the flip side of that, a good child should seek to please their parents. A good child should seek to please their their father. Yes. And of course, I'm speaking of us and God. Um, that's that's how we show our love to God. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter two. Um, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon. Just a little past the middle of your Bible. Ecclesiastes. Songs properly Ecclesiastes songs. Sorry about that. Um, song of Solomon chapter two. <clears throat> another um, another example of our bond with God, our relationship. <clears throat> song of Solomon chapter two and verse one says. Um, <clears throat> I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons, come for me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand does embrace me. And... The whole book of Song of Solomon is a picture of the church in Christ and the union that we as the bride of Christ have with the one that died for us. And God, God uses this um, because there is this bond of love that I'll use my wife again as an example. <clears throat> I, I feel a, I feel a love in me that I don't feel towards anybody else. And it goes beyond the obvious romantic attraction. It, it's, it's a, a, a deep affection to her personality, her being. And she's my wife. She's a part of me. She is a part of my household. She's a part of everything that I do since we've been married. I, you know, outside of maybe running to the store or going to work, she's there with me. If you take me, you take her. If she's not invited, I'm not invited. You know, that's, that's how it, you know. Somebody's not going to say, hey, come over, but leave her there. I, no, see you later. And... That's how it should be with God. How many times do we sit around people that curse our God, that curse our bridegroom, that, that use Jesus Christ, the, the holiest name in the world, as something profane, as a curse word, and sit there. And, and I am more guilty of this than anybody. But don't speak up and say, hey... You know, that, that's my friend, that's my savior, that's amen. that's the love of my soul. <clears throat> yes. Why amen. are you, you know, I, I would prefer it if you didn't talk like that. <laughs> I would prefer it if you didn't, you know. Anyways, I could go on about that. I, that's one thing that really bothers me, is when people use the words of anything. Um, <clears throat> I think that true marital love, and it's right state is a good picture of Christ in the church. <laughs> there is a unity and a devotion and 
I don't make a business decision. I don't, I don't buy a, a $20 video game without my wife knowing about it. And it's not like I ask for permission, <laughs> well, sometimes, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's that she's a part of that. Her name's on my bank account. Her name is on my stuff. Like, it's not my bank account. It's our bank account. It's not my money. It's our money. It's not my decision to make. It's our decision to make. And how blessed would we be if we did that with Jesus Christ? If we said, I want this, but it's not just my decision to make. What do you think about it? What, do you, what would you have me do here? Amen. I want to go say this and do this, but what, 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 what's your opinion? Amen. That, that's, there's a devotion and a sacrifice of oneself to where I don't care if I'm uncomfortable, if I'm not getting enough whatever. You know, if I'm not getting enough sleep or I'm not getting enough food or I don't have, you know, this or that. I prioritize my wife's comfort over my own. <laughs> I would rather, you know, if, if we're down to one sandwich, which thank God he's blessed us to the point where we haven't ever had that problem yet. But if we were down to one sandwich, she, she would take I would make sure that she had it. Because it doesn't matter to me. How I feel because I love her and I put her above me. Do you see where I'm going with this? Amen. It doesn't matter to me how I feel about something. How much yes. I long or desire or whatever. <laughs> I put his needs above mine. I put his happiness above my own. And then I walk how he wants me to walk. Amen. Because that's what makes me happy. Or it makes him happier. <laughs> um... <clears throat> We are washed in the blood of Jesus Amen. and purchased by that sacred holy blood. Yeah. And the least that we can do is include him in our lives, include him in the decisions that we make. And, you know, I don't, I don't go, I don't go too long without talking to my wife. I talk to her every day. I text her on break at work. I text her when I get to work. What about God? What about, I mean, my wife never got crucified for my soul. And if she did, I'm sure it wouldn't have been when I was her bitter end. Because we're not like that. But God is. When we're God's bitter enemy, he gets crucified to save our soul. How much do you talk to? And you know, and people don't get this about prayer, but it doesn't have to be overly formal or rigid. It, prayer, it, it, it's like like talking to somebody else. It's like talking to God. And, I mean, that's what it is. It, it, and this is where we're blessed that we understand that we don't have to go to somebody else to go to God for us. We don't need a go between a high priest or whatever to get our word to God because we have our mediator. We have Jesus Christ that takes our word to God. And I used to just tell God about my day or thank him for the pretty clouds or, you know, thank him for getting a good parking spot or, you know, just, just talk to God. It'll make it really, the more that you talk to God, It'll make a difference in your life. Um, Amen. I'm going to do... I'm going to do two more points. But I'm going to go through them kind of quickly because we're getting tight on time. Um, John 15 and verse 10 Um Well, actually, we'll do verse 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lie down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant, servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. 
Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. <clears throat> God calls us friends. Uh, in Proverbs 17 or 18, uh, it says, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Um, <laughs> that's, that's Jesus. He is a friend that we can go to, that we can rely on, that we can always have that support. If there's problems with your family, if there's problems with your marriage, if there's problems with your job, if there's problems with your finances, you can go to this friend and he's confident. You can put your confidence in him. You can trust him to take care of whatever issues you have. And you can always trust that his advice is going to be right. And... He's the best friend that you could ever have. Amen. And lastly, Matthew chapter 12. I actually didn't put bookmarks in a couple of those spots today. So. Um, at the very end of the chapter here, um, And this is one that I won't go very long on because I don't understand that much about it. But um, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12 and uh, verse 48 says, But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. <clears throat> Jesus Christ claims us as family. Um, in Romans it calls him the firstborn of many brethren. Um, he adopted us into this family as uh, as brethren. And because we, we are, as he was, the sons of God. There he is, I should say. And, again, that's not necessarily something that I perfectly understand, but, again, what I see, because I don't have any siblings, but what I see with siblings is, again, they're always there. They're always, you know, they might not always get along, but they're always a part of your life. And... Jesus Christ came low. He humbled himself all the way down to the suffering of the cross <clears throat> so that he could bring us in and, and commune with us and that we could be close to him and uh, our Father, God the Father. And there's, I've heard it said that like nobody knows you better than your siblings. Nobody knows you better than the people that you grew up with. Not your friends, not your spouse, not your parents. You know, they all see you in a different light than how your siblings see you. Your siblings, you don't really put on airs with them because they know who you really are. You know, you don't have to clean up the house before they come over because they're you know, it's your brother or your sister. And that's how God, that's how that's how the Lord Jesus is. We don't have to put on airs with him because he knows us how we are. And I'm not at all trying to use this as a license to sin or anything like that. <laughs> because we should always be striving to please him more. But in the areas where you're failing, don't let that keep you from God. Don't let the areas where you're displeasing God and you're doing something that you know is wrong... Don't let those areas come in between you and your reading of God's Word and your prayer, your fellowship with Amen. God, your attendance yes. to church, the singing of hymns, the, all the stuff that we do to worship God and to draw closer yes. to God. Don't let your sin get in the way of that. Because <laughs> if you don't, that will get in the way of your sin eventually. Either your relationship yes. with God will cut out the sin in your life or your sin will cut out the relationship with God in your life. You can't have both at once. And um, 
I'll end with this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Amen. God's already proven his love to every one of us here. He already proved it with each step with that cross on his back being brutally assaulted in ways I won't even describe because there's children present. <clears throat> and the suffering that, uh, that he went through, he's already proven his love beyond anything we could ever do for him. Amen. And yeah. it's good for us to love him back. Amen. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so with that, I'll have your pastor come up and give, uh, give the invitation. All right. Come on down here, Logan, if you will. And uh, stand there right in front of the altar because somebody might need to come up here and get things straightened out. I'm just guessing. Amen. Because you know what? We don't go through a day without having problems, ups and downs, and things that need to we need to talk through with the Lord. We we like like Logan was saying, communication is something we can do with God and should do every day. Yes. Driving down the road. Getting up, going to work, having devotions and things that make a difference in our lives. We have a, a wonderful asset yes. of communication with our holy God. Amen. And it doesn't have to be real flowery or fancy. When Peter was sinking and he was, and Jesus was walking on the water, he said, okay, let me come out to you. And he did. And then he began to sink. How fancy was his prayer? Yeah. Lord, save me. Yep. Yep. Let me tell you, when we need the Lord, we can get the words out to God, and He will be listening. Yes. So every day, let's turn to the Lord and be able to do the things He wants us to do. <clears throat> so let's turn to have thine own way, Lord. Page 349, which is what Logan was also saying, have thine own way, Lord. God wants to lead us. He wants to help us along the way. But if we will let him have his way, things will go a whole lot better for us. Not that we won't have problems, but that his blessings are there. His protection are there. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. So let's, let's go ahead and stand for just a moment. <clears throat> Turn to page 349. In the hymnal, Jamie's going to play that song for us. And as we sing that song, I wonder, have you let the Lord have his own way? Or are you still having your own way in your life, doing your things, getting in trouble, finding consequences that are not good? And a lot of people will say, I don't know why things are going the way they are. They're going the way they are because you made some decisions that were probably not good. And when you make decisions, there are consequences. When you sin, there are consequences. So if you'll let the Lord have his own way in your life, how do you do that? Well, first of all, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you can't say you're one of his children. And as Logan was saying, God is biased to his children. He absolutely loves us even when we were unlovable. He loved us. Now that we are his children, you see. He wants to do the very best for us. He wants to lead us in a way that we can be blessed. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for them that love God and are called according to His purpose. It's a purpose He wants to show us, but we can't see His purpose if we're not listening to God. If we're not responding, how do you get saved? People say, well, it's an easy thing to get saved. It wasn't so easy for Jesus Christ for us, was it? They don't call it Good Friday because it was a good day for him in, in the respect of humanly speaking. As he was a, a man on this earth, he died that we might have life, eternal life. It's Good Friday because now we can be saved eternally. And now we know that Jesus Christ wants you and I to be prepared to be able to live the way he wants us to live. So how do you do that? Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins. Recognize He is the Almighty God, the great three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel means Christ among us or God among us. That's what Emmanuel means. And so He lived, He was born, He lived, He died that we might be saved. Ask forgiveness for your sins. Ask Him to come to your heart. Be your Savior. Believe. Confess Him with words. 
God's word says that if we'll confess him, he will save us. Now, here we go. Have thine own way. Have thine own way.
Would you remember you can acknowledge before God? You can raise your hand right there in a moment and say, God, I need your help. I, I'm drifting and I can't find my way. When did I get out of God's way? When did, when did I get to this, this place in life where I'm not fulfilled and I'm not happy in life for some reason? God wants us to know He loves us. He wants us to have that joy no matter what's going on in our lives. A deep joy. A deep love that Logan was talking about, that he puts there, even deeper than the love we have for our spouse, deeper than having that little child that he's given us and the joy that child brings. Listen, God loves you that much. All the hands, Logan, did you see that? Now, is there someone else who would say, well, you haven't touched on anything about what I've got a problem with, but you want to raise your hand and say, I've got some things going on too. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, listen, there's another hand right there. You see, it may be we don't even know the right question to ask. So how can we know the answers? We don't know what's wrong. And I've come to the altar before and said, Lord, I don't know what's wrong. Would you help me? I can't even put my finger on it. But I know that I need help. And God is there. We're going to have a word of prayer now. If the altar is open, you can come up and pray if you'd like to. Come on up and pray. Some are just in deep need of prayer right now. Would you come up? Would you come up if you need to pray? This altar is open. Come on up and pray. The Lord loves you. He sent His Son to die for you. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. He loves you that much. Dear Heavenly Father, we turn to you right now. There are those that are struggling right now with their lives, and, and they have been shown for, by your word that things aren't like they should be, that we are not in the hollow of your hand the way you want us to be with doing the things you want us to do. We're there for your protection. We're there for your love. We're there for you to take care of us and help us, but we are not right where we need to be when it comes to obedience unto you, unto fulfilling your purpose and your plan in our lives. Help us, Father, be honest with you. We need your help. Many hands were raised, Lord. We can see that there are those all around us in live stream too that are struggling right now maybe more than ever. Father, as a nation, as a world today, as individuals, we need your help in a great way. Father, I pray that each hand that was raised, as you've seen these hands, you know who they are, that Father, Father, as they've acknowledged their needs before you, Father, would you help them? Help them, Lord, whatever it might be, to know that they can turn to you now, and we're going to do that. Dear Heavenly Father, with whatever it is that's going on in our lives right now, we ask you, Father, would you help us? Forgive us where we failed you. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our disobedience, for our pride, arrogance, our self-willed planning and purpose. Forgive us for these things. Help us, Father, to seek that forgiveness. Ask you and believe in that forgiveness that you want to give us right now. And Father, for these that are having medical problems, financial and marital and relationship problems, Father, I pray things at work. I pray, Father, right now you help us to say, Lord, I can't do this on my own and you don't want me to. So I'm asking you to help me right now. And we're asking this, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. And now... Uh, how many kids we got out here? Well, we'll do we'll do Father Abraham later, okay? All right, you guys have been good today. They haven't been good to look at a good congregation here to preach to. Yes, and listening and so attentive, raising hands, acknowledging that they were listening. So we're coming to a close now. I want you to listen. Here's what I'd like you to do. Did you know there are some people? C and E Christians. Have you heard that expression? 
C and E Christians. Christian and Eastern Christians. And so, listen, there are some people that will, will only come for per certain purposes to church. Don't let that bother you. If you can get them to church for any reason, it's a good reason. Invite them to Easter service. Invite them for church next Sunday for the Easter service. If they want to put some nice clothes on, it's okay. If that's a good reason to come to church, come to get a new outfit, let them come. We'll preach to them. We'll let them hear the word. And it'll be something that God can use in their lives. Please, I just ask you this. Would you invite at least one person to church next Sunday? Please. And if they don't accept the invite, or if you're not sure if they're going to come, invite somebody else. Keep on inviting. We need to be where God needs us to be. Yeah. Rachel's planning a, a, prayer, a, a, a dinner for the family, right, Rachel? And so, listen. As we ask them about the dinner, let's ask them another thing. Are you coming to church? Right? Plan it for Easter egg hunt. You know what? Listen, ask them also. Oh, you're going to the Easter egg hunt. Fine. Hey, you're going to church too? You see? Sometimes we get in the cart before the horse, don't we? In this, these planning things that we do. We're coming to a close now. And as we bow in a moment of prayer, I'd like to ask Terry Brandon to dismiss us in prayer. Thank you. Before we do that, thank you so much. Let's give let's give Jamie a big hand. Amen. Yes, Jessica, for her special song. Amen. You see, God is blessing. Let's stand together and we'll have a word of prayer. Let's stand. And thank you, Logan, for that word that God gave you for us today. We forget sometimes how much God loves us. We need to remember that. We need his guidance. Now, Terry, if you will uh, go ahead and dismiss us in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this message and we pray, Father, that.